Good morning, it's Jeffrey Christian of CPM Group. It's about 12.15 in the afternoon, so good afternoon, actually. Uh, Friday, March 17th, uh, here in New York. I wanted to talk about whether or not there is going to be enough silver to meet future demand for silver in solar uh, photovoltaic panels. There's been a lot of discussion in the silver market, at least on the internet, recently that solar panels production is going to use so much silver that it'll be 80 or 90 percent of future production, either mine production or total production, including scrap, is not clear, uh, you know, and that it, that the use of solar panels will squeeze out other applications uh, for silver. It's not true. I mean, it could be true if a lot of things happen that probably aren't going to happen. Uh, there are a wide range of projections from legitimate research groups. Uh, there's some very, very interesting research uh, from a couple, uh, a professor and a postgraduate, uh, postdoctoral uh, researcher at the University of New South Wales. You know, it depends on a lot of things happening or not happening. One of the things is what's the technology going to be uh, for solar panels over the next yeah, 5, 10, 30 years uh, going forward. Another thing is what are the regulations going to be? Some people use what's called the NZE or net zero emission scenario in which the world's governments and industry and societies get together and really aggressively fight climate change by reducing carbon dioxide emissions to net zero by the year 2050. Most people say that's probably not going to happen. Uh, CPM Group definitely doesn't do that. We use what is called the International Energy Agency's uh, stated uh, policies uh, or steps scenario, which basically says, let's look at what's been happening really since the Paris Agreement in 2016, but even going back further. Let's look at actual trends and not what people are saying or promising to do in the future, but what they're actually say doing now and let's you let's assume that those stated policies continue and in that kind of environment the world falls far short of net zero emissions by 2050 um, and consequently everything that goes into reaching net zero emissions is marked down so there's less solar power there's less wind power there's more uh, petroleum uh, natural gas and coal usage uh, than in the idealized net zero emissions uh, scenario. If you use net zero emissions, you could be using three times as much silver as CPM group projects uh, you might be using in the future. We use this steps or stated policies uh, scenario, and we use industry information about what they expect to be using in terms of amounts of silver per solar panel, per mil, uh, megawatt of production capacity. Uh, and we use the industry's information and the in industry's expectations to come up with our projections out to 2030 and beyond for how much silver will be used. And in that environment, solar panels become increasingly important as a source of demand for fabrication purposes of silver but the, it doesn't squeeze out other uh, uses, and there's plenty of silver left for everybody else. Um, and it's not just the solar panel use, but what's going to be happening with other uses too, and future mine production, secondary recovery from scrap, and you have a billion ounces coming into the market uh, every year now from mine production and scrap recovery. And as the solar power industry continues to grow, you will get to the end of life or the end of efficaciousness on solar panels. And you're starting to see this already with solar panels being recycled and the silver being recovered and the silver being reused. So even as sil silver use in solar panels will continue to rise, and I'll show you our projections in a moment, even as solar panels continue to rise in, in terms of the amount of silver they're using, the net 
amount of silver being used may be significantly less. People were worried 20, 30 years ago when digital photography started replacing uh, conventional silver halide-based photography, uh, photographic technologies uh, in, in photography. Photography was a major use of silver. It was using about 240, 250 million ounces of silver per year at its peak. People said, well, what if we lose 250 million ounces of fabrication demand? Well, you'll also lose about 100 million ounces of the recycling of silver and recovery of silver from spent photographic papers, photographic films, and photographic developing solutions. So your net loss would have been, in total, 140 million ounces. We're still using about 40 or 50 million ounces of silver in, in photographic applications on a gross basis. So we have lost 200 million ounces of gross uh, silver use in photographic uh, applications. It's no longer the largest use of silver. Uh, but after you adjust for the fact that you're not seeing 100, 120 million ounces of, of silver being recovered from spent photographic products, your net loss of total demand for silver is much smaller. Similar trends will occur over the next 30 years as solar panels reach the end of their uh, useful lives and, and recycling picks up more. And it's not just refined, newly refined metal entering the market. You have 5.5 billion ounces of above ground bullion inventories and bullion bars and coins that if the price were to rise, some of that stuff would be sold for profits. People would take their profits and that silver would be available. And then you have about 26 billion ounces of silver that exists or is estimated to exist in jewelry and silverware and decorative objects and religious objects and statues and things like that, that at the right price, at higher prices, some of that will come in and be refined into silver bullion to meet other fabrication demand. So it's a much more complex situation than some simplistic views. And the loadings are quite different from what some of the optimistic, if you will, are really bullish for silver demand uh, applications are. There's another thing. Markets just don't behave that way. Uh, you know, you very rarely find in single application chasing out everybody else. It happened in rhodium, but rhodium is a very small market, about a million ounces in total supply, so one-tenth of one percentage the size of, of silver. Uh, and it doesn't have a terminal market. It doesn't have billions of ounces of inventories. It did happen in electronics and palladium. Uh, palladium used to be used in 85% of the semiconductors manufactured in the world. In the period 1997 through 2000, uh, there were some major developments in the palladium market, and the palladium price went from like $160, $180 up to about $750 and ultimately to 1000 at which point the electronics industry wholesale abandoned palladium Palladium use in electronics fell 90% in a year. People, uh, manufacturers substituted into other metals. And for, uh, so palladium use in electronics still has, has far from recovered to its previous level. So the way markets work also factors into the unlikelihood that the use of silver and solar power will rise so fast and so far as to squeeze out other uses and prohibit investors from being able to find silver at reasonable prices. Well, let's look at a few numbers. This is the solar panel industry's expectations of future installations of solar photovoltaic panels and then you can in megawatts. And you can see, turn of the century, it was virtually nothing. Most recent years, it's been around 200 mega, 1,000 megawatts of, of new production of panel. We also have figures on installation because what you'll see from time to time is that the production of panels will outpace installations and you'll have a buildup of inventories 
and then you'll see a pullback for a while. That happened a couple times over the last 10 years. Um, but these are the actual production of panels, which is where the silver is used. Uh, about 200,000 megawatts right now, and the industry expectations are that by 2032, 10 years from now, it'll be about 460, 470 megawatts. So roughly doubling, somewhat more than doubling over the next 10 years. That's pretty dynamic growth. Silver use, you can see there's sort of an arcing, a slowing in the rate of increase projected over the next 10 years. And again, this is based on what the industry expects to be using in terms of silver per megawatt and per panel. These are millions of ounces. We spiked up to about 120, 119 million ounces last year. Our expectation is about 134 million ounces this year. And the rate of growth slows over the coming decades, but it gets up to about 188 million ounces of silver being used in the solar panels by the year 30, 2032. Um, so not quite double, but very strong growth. And far from the 900 million ounces of silver that's used in a variety of manufactured products today. So put those together, and this is what it looks like. Looks like solar, silver power, silver use in photovoltaic cells is, is something around 12, 13, 14% of silver fabrication demand today. And we have it getting up to about 19% 10 years from now. Now, other people are looking at solar panel uh, demand for silver in terms of mine production. Mine production is actually higher, greater or mine production plus the 200 million ounces that's refined uh, from scrap each year, that's a billion ounces. Uh, so it's an even larger thing. So that solar panel demand for silver as a percentage of total supply will be even less than it is a percentage of fabrication demand over the ensuing years. Put it all together, silver... Applic uh, silver use in photovoltaic uh, panels is, is strong, and it's expected to, to grow strongly over the next 10 years, 20 years, and 30 years. Solar power is, is going sharply. Uh, we were looking at some other legitimate sources of uh, research and data, and they actually have a slower growth in silver use in photovoltaic uh, cells because they have a greater reduction in the per unit use of silver per panel and per megawatt of capacity being manufactured uh, over the next 10 years than we have. They also have a reduction in small uses like homes and factories, and, and the bulk of their growth in solar panels will be at uh, the uh, at the utility level, large solar panel operations. Our expectation is that solar panels will continue to grow in terms of their demand, both on a utility grade level and on the smaller consumer and industrial and, and office building uh, levels. We just think that it has a very bright future. But its future is not so bright as to jeopardize the balance of the silver market. Good thing to know, get away from a little bit of the over-enthusiasm hypercaffeination uh, that you see in terms of discussions about silver use in photovoltaics. That's all we've got for today. Uh, we're going to wrap it up for the week here. We will be coming out with our gold yearbook uh, Tuesday, March 28th at 10 a.m. We'll have an online briefing. We'll release the gold yearbook by then. Uh, we're furiously working on it right now. And then on April 3rd, Monday, at 11 a.m., we will have an open forum for our clients, including our retail investor program clients, where they can send in questions ahead of time or ask questions as the discussion goes. And, you know, we don't have a, a formal prepared presentation. 
We simply address the issues that people want us to address at that time. Uh, take care of yourself. Have a good weekend. Take care of people around you. Try to do something nice for the world. And we'll talk to you next week.